Welcome back, Vancouver, to the Institute of Urban Ecology. Who here likes to eat salmon? If you've lived in British Columbia for a while now, you no doubt know how much the locals here love this fish. And you've no doubt probably heard about the wild populations of salmon declining in the news year after year after year. But one of the most overlooked threats to our wild Pacific salmon populations is right here in our own backyard. This inconspicuous little stream. <coughs> Metro Vancouver used to be one big tangled mess of salmon streams, all leading to the Fraser River. But due to urban development, only a handful of those streams remain. Can this stream really be that big of a threat? Let's go find out. The land surrounding the Fraser River used to be a big maze of smaller rivers and streams all connecting the mainland to the Pacific Ocean. The beauty of our cities here though is no secret and due to popularity, urban areas keep on expanding and our salmon streams keep disappearing. Vancouver used to be home to 50 salmon streams but today only two remain. This stream here doesn't contain any salmon. And I know this because many Metro Vancouver municipalities have maps online that show the public where they can find salmon spawning habitat. However, this stream is still connected to all the others via the Fraser River. So what happens here can still have a really strong impact on our salmon populations. In Seattle, many of the coho salmon returning to urban streams to spawn are dying, but they're dying before they spawn rather than after. In some urban streams, up to 60 to 100% of the coho salmon died before spawning, compared to those non-urban streams where less than 1% of the coho salmon died prematurely. Many studies have looked at this mass die off and it's still unclear what exactly is causing the huge urban populations to die. But one thing is for certain, there's something in these urban ecosystems that is leaching into the salmon streams. This is Still Creek, a coho salmon spawning stream right here in Burnaby. And it literally passes right underneath Willingdon Avenue here and right alongside Highway 1. And now one of the hypotheses from the Seattle coho salmon is that they may be getting poisoned by trace amounts or very, very small amounts of lead, nickel and or zinc possibly coming from car tires and brakes. Now, could the coho salmon here in Still Creek face a similar fate? An easy way to measure the health of your stream is to look at the benthic invertebrates that live there. Benthic invertebrates are small animals like insects or worms that live at the bottom of the stream. If you find mayfly, stonefly, or caddisfly larvae in your stream, that's a good sign because these invertebrates only live in pollution-free waters. We call animals like this indicator species because they indicate the health of the surrounding environment. Amphibians also make a good indicator species for streams because they're also very susceptible to small amounts of pollution. You can learn to identify the benthic invertebrates in your stream by downloading the Stream Keeper's Handbook available for free online. It includes easy to follow instructions and beautifully clear diagrams to help you identify what it is you find in your stream. You should never conduct these tests in any known salmon spawning streams. Disturbing these streams can easily kill salmon eggs and fragile fry. To find out if your stream is known to house salmon, you can check your city's map online. I've included links to the maps that I found here so you can easily see if your stream is known to support spawning salmon. But again, even though this stream doesn't have any salmon in it, 
it's still probably connected to a larger salmon stream. And so any pollution in here can still negatively impact any fish living downstream. Stormwater flows directly back into nature without any further treatment. Some drains are labeled with yellow fish like this to remind neighbors that salmon live nearby. But again, just because you may not live right next to a salmon stream doesn't mean what you put down here won't impact them. Obviously, we can't control everything that goes down the drain. However, there are some simple things that you can do. First, you can wash your car with eco-friendly soap. And remember to always dump excess soapy water down your sink. If you can't find an eco-friendly soap, then take your car to a car wash. Many of these do have eco-friendly options for you, but on top of that, their drains do lead to a water treatment plant before returning to nature. You can also easily help by keeping your streets free of any litter that might get accidentally washed down the storm drains and then into our streams, rivers, and ocean. Year after year during Canadian shoreline cleanups, one of the biggest, most common pieces of litter found along our shoreline are cigarette butts. Would you want to eat salmon out of an ashtray? Help keep cigarette butts out of our salmon ecosystems by looking for cigarette disposals like this and not tossing your butts onto the ground. As well as labeling storm drains, many known salmon spawning streams have signs like these. However, if you've lived in the neighborhood for a while and never seen a salmon in your stream, you might assume that these signs are old or outdated, but they're not. It is still your neighborhood's responsibility to help take care of these fragile ecosystems. Salmon eggs are very easily killed by being stepped on or buried in too much silt so before you let your kids or pets play in your local stream, look for these signs and also look online to make sure that you're not damaging this fragile salmon spawning habitat. Newcomers to the neighborhood and the country may also not fully understand the significance of these signs. So be a good neighbor and help spread the awareness. We're not the only ones who like salmon here in British Columbia. The Pacific salmon are literally the lifeblood to our coastal temperate rainforest, feeding everything from orcas and eagles, even the trees. But as if climate change, disease, and overfishing wasn't enough, now our urban salmon literally have to fight for their lives even before they leave their eggs. Learning how to protect your urban stream is a great activity for children and adults alike. Check out our video description below to find a Streamkeeper Society near you. And of course, subscribe to our channel to find out other ways that you can help protect our urban ecosystems. Until next time, Vancouver, thank you, and we'll see you soon.